to crown this year's elite player. The player who has through 22 rounds stood taller than all others. Many will contend. Among them, a giant from the West. A man from Sydney who has shone on this night. Prolific ball winners from the Saints. The captain at Carlton. But three come here tonight with hopes higher than most. Dane Swan, the Collingwood ball magnet. He's become the untaggable midfielder. Not blessed with a classical gait, his repeat speed, his willingness to run, and run, and run again, has broken the spirits of those who would curb him. Luke Hodge, a heart and soul player, occasionally broken, but never bowed. Hodge is the footballer's footballer. Forward, back, through the middle. When the moment calls for someone to dig deep, the Hawks look no further than the man in the number 15 Guernsey. Gary Ablett, the defending champion from Geelong, casting his own shadow now. He has remained irrepressible on the ball or unstoppable in attack. The go-to man for his teammates. They look to give and he just goes and goes and goes. They tried to stop him. It hasn't worked. He took a legendary surname at Geelong and made it even better. Champions of their clubs. Champions of the game. Welcome to the 2010 Brownlow Medal. The favourites, Dane Swan. Number one this year in kicks. Number one in disposals. Top 10 in contested ball. Top 10 for inside 50s. A back-to-back -back Copeland Trophy winner. An All-Australian for the first time last year. And Gary Ablett. Second this year in disposals. Top five in handballs. Top 10 inside 50s per game. 44 goals. Last year's Brownlow medal winner. Twice a best and fairest. The player's MVP last year. Four times an All-Australian. And of course, a two-time Premiership player. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host for the 2010 Brownlow medal count, Stephen Quartermain. Thank you. Please once again thank our opening performers, Anthony Jay, James Ryan on the guitar, the City of Melbourne Highland Pipe Band and the String Diva. Well done, guys. Great job. <laughs> Welcome to the 2010 Brownlow Medal Count on 10, the night we hand out the AFL's highest individual honour. This season, the Collingwood Football Club has taken all before it, and their gun midfielder, Dane Swan, is the absolute white-hot favourite. Will he salute? Or can he be trumped by one of his teammates? You've also had excellent seasons in Scott Pendlebury or Alan Didak. Last year's winner, Geelong, Gary Ablett, will poll strongly again, but he also has some strong internal competition from his fellow midfielder, Joel Selwood, who's also had a ripping season. Only four players in the history of our great game have collected the trifecta of medals, the Premiership, the Norm Smith and the Brownlow. Carlton's Chris Judd is one of those. Don't discount the 2004 winner. Or could Hawthorne's Luke Hodge become the fifth man in the history of the game to join that elite group? Fremantle docker Aaron Sandilands would certainly be the tallest winner of the Brownlow. Despite missing the last three games of the season, the All-Australian Ruckman must be a big chance. And let's not forget about St Kilda. Brendan Goddard, Lenny Hayes and Lee Montagna must be among the hopes. Or will it be a smoky? Someone like the Western Bulldogs' Matthew Boyd, who averaged 31 disposals and seven clearances in 2010. Yes, you might be a chance, Matthew. Don't shake your head. Or can the Dockers' Michael Barlow poll so many votes in his first 13 rounds that he'll be untouchable? What a story that would be. Good luck to all those in the running tonight. Put your hands together for the contestants for the Brownlow medal in 2010. They're the big chances. 
A big thank you also tonight to our hosts, in particular Anne Peacock and Joe Stuckey. And let's take this opportunity to say good luck to our two combatants on Saturday in the grand final of 2010. To Mick Malthouse and the Collingwood Football Club, good luck, Mick. And to Ross Lyon and his Saints, all the very best for Saturday at the MCG. The votes for the Brownlow medal are kept under lock and key, except for one minor hiccup in round eight between the Demons and the Eagles, but the AFL sorted that out very quickly, and the votes were brought into the room a short time ago. And all the envelopes have been accounted for by the AFL's auditors. Now, before we start the count, please put your hands together for the Chief Executive Officer of the AFL, Andrew Dimitriou. Good evening and welcome to tonight's 83rd Brownlow Medal Count. Tonight's gathering is a properly constituted meeting of the AFL with all commissioners present. Joining me to supervise the count and ensure the votes are read in the right order are AFL's General Manager of Football Operations, Adrian Anderson, our Ground Operations Manager, Jill Lindsay, and Football Administration Manager, Rod Austin. In accordance with AFL Regulation 17, at the conclusion of each match, the three field umpires conferred and recorded their opinion of the three fairest and best players in each of the 176 home and away matches played this season. The votes were then placed in a sealed envelope marked Brownlow Medal. In the case of two or more players receiving an equal number of votes, each shall be declared the joint winner and each of these players shall be awarded a Brownlow Medal. If a player has been found guilty of a reportable offence, in a home and away match in which the Brownlow medal votes have been cast, the player shall remain eligible to receive the Brownlow medal if the sanction for the reportable offence is a financial sanction or that the base demerit points allocated to the reportable offence are less than 100 points. Tonight is one of our very special nights and follows a fantastic Toyota AFL Premiership season, where the stars of the game thrilled us with their high marking, unbelievable goals and incredible acts of skill and courage. I want to again welcome everyone here and at home and thank all of the players, the officials and supporters who have made the 2010 Toyota AFL season such a wonderful success. Thank you and enjoy the evening. Thank you, Andrew. So let's get into it. Round one started on a Thursday night. It was Richmond versus Carlton at the MCG in front of 72,000 people. It was a new season and a new coach, but the same old story for the Tigers as season 2010 got underway at the MCG. And the Blues faithful didn't have to wait long to find their new forward target. Gary Ablett maintained his form from last year. 37 disposals and total domination over the Bombers. The Saints certainly weren't holding back. Welcome back to footy tying. And the same could be said for the coach of the Swans. Whatever happened to Mr Cool? The Feb Brown show got underway in Brisbane. And even though it was his 350th game, for once Jono wasn't smiling as the Doggies pre-season bubble burst in spectacular style. And who would have guessed the World Soccer Cup was to come? Oh, that's just super. Round one, Richmond versus Carlton. Carlton, B Gibbs, one vote. Carlton, A Carazzo, two votes. Carlton, A Scotland, three votes. Geelong versus Essendon. Geelong, G Ablett, one vote. Geelong, C Ling, two votes. Geelong, J Bartell, three votes. Melbourne versus Hawthorne. Hawthorne, S. Mitchell, one vote. Hawthorne, J. Lewis, two votes. Hawthorne, L. Hodge, three votes. Sydney versus St Kilda. Sydney, L. Montagna, one vote. Sydney, St Kilda, sorry, L. Montagna, one vote. Sydney, J. McVeigh, two votes. St Kilda, N. Revolt, three votes. Brisbane versus West Coast. Brisbane, J. Brown, one vote. Brisbane, M. Riscatelli, two votes. Brisbane, J. Brennan, three votes. Port Adelaide versus North Melbourne. North Melbourne, J. Zebel, one vote. Port Adelaide, T. Boak, two votes. Port Adelaide, K. Corns, three votes. Western Bulldogs versus Collingwood. Western Bulldogs, M. Boyd, one vote. Collingwood, D. Swan, two votes. Collingwood, H. O'Brien, three votes. Fremantle versus Adelaide. Fremantle, M. Pavlich, one vote. 
Fremantle, D. Mundy, two votes. Fremantle, A. Sanderlands, three votes. It wasn't necessarily a warm welcome against his old team, but for once, Fev let his footy do the talking. Everything I say is stupid, so I might as well keep your mouth shut. But it was Big John Brown who had the last word, kicking seven against the Blues. It was heartbreak for the Demons, as they couldn't quite grab a win against the Pies. That's heartbreaking. A hapless North Melbourne didn't kick their first major until the 18th minute of the second quarter. Whilst over in the West, Treaders enjoyed his 250th with a close win over the Eagles. Even though the skipper was run over during the week, the dogs still overran the Tigers. After a week of controversy, the Bombers found it hard to convert at the Lloyd, Lockett or even Coventry end, giving Frio its first win against Essendon in Melbourne since 1998. For the Swans, it was their first win in Adelaide since 2001. This time. Easter Monday and an arm wrestle of biblical proportions between heavyweights Geelong and Hawthorne. The Cats only taking the lead with 10 minutes to go, which didn't make Jeff too happy. Round two, Brisbane Lions versus Carlton. Brisbane, Jay Brennan, one vote. Brisbane, Al Power, two votes. Brisbane, Jay Brown, three votes. Collingwood versus Melbourne. Melbourne, R. Petthead, one vote. Collingwood, S. Pendlebury, two votes. Melbourne, A. Davey, three votes. St Kilda versus North Melbourne. St Kilda, N. Del Santo, one vote. St Kilda, B. Goddard, two votes. St Kilda, N. Revolt, three votes. West Coast versus Port Adelaide. Port Adelaide, T. Boak, one vote. West Coast, N. Natanui, two votes. Port Adelaide, J. Davenport, three votes. Adelaide versus Sydney. Sydney, M. Seabee, one vote. Sydney, R. O'Keefe, two votes. Sydney, B. McGlynn, three votes. Essendon versus Fremantle. Fremantle, M. Pavlich, one vote. Fremantle, M. Barlow, two votes. Fremantle, A. Sanderlands, three votes. Richmond versus Western Bulldogs. Western Bulldogs, B. Lake, one vote. Western Bulldogs, M. Hahn, two votes. Western Bulldogs, L. Gilby, three votes. Hawthorne versus Geelong. Geelong, G. Ablett, one vote. Hawthorne, S. Mitchell, two votes. Geelong, B. Otten, three votes. So two down and 20 to go as we take a break from Crown. Let's relive some more moments from the blue carpet tonight. Thirteen days to go before the Commonwealth Games of 2010 in Delhi. And it all starts on October the 3rd, so you can check all the action out on the 10 network. Well, during tonight, we're going to put the Channel 10 computer to work and we're going to do the Brownlow predictor. We're going to focus in firstly on Gary Ablett. So far, the computer predicts he gets three votes. He's got a couple. And just interesting to note that late in the season, Gary Ablett finishes very, very strongly. Bruce hamstring tore and Mick let rip in Friday night's passionate encounter between the Saints and the Wayward Pies. North bounced back to form with Boomer Harvey picking up 44 possessions and kicking the yes! kick! oh! point of the century. Another week had another dominant performance by the Lions' two-pronged attack. Essendon maintained their recent dominance over the Blues, much to the coach's delight. After heartbreak the week before, Melbourne scored a gutsy come-from-behind win. Was it crisis time at Adelaide? It was a match of the heavy hits as two of September's contenders left nothing in the change rooms. Cyril was everywhere, hand after a dominant pre-season, finally a big haul for the Bulldogs' new gun forward. The superstars came out to play in Perth. Ablett with 33 touches and four goals, Pavlitz 26 and five, leading Frio to their best ever start to a season. Round three, St Kilda versus Collingwood. St Kilda, Jay Gwilt, one vote. St Kilda, Al Montagna, two votes. St Kilda, S. Gilbert, three votes. North Melbourne versus West Coast. North Melbourne, A. Swallow, one vote. West Coast, M. Prittis, two votes. North Melbourne, B. Harvey, three votes. Sydney versus Richmond. Sydney, L. Roberts Thompson, one vote. Sydney, J. Bolton, two votes. Sydney, B. McGlynn, three votes. Carlton versus Essendon. Essendon, J. Watson, one vote. Essendon, N. Lovett Murray, two votes. 
Essendon, D. Fletcher, three votes. Port Adelaide versus Brisbane. Brisbane, J. Sherman, one vote. Brisbane, M. Riscatelli, two votes. Brisbane, J. Brown, three votes. Melbourne versus Adelaide. Melbourne, James McDonald, one vote. Adelaide, B. Vince, two votes. Melbourne, J. Grimes, three votes. Western Bulldogs versus Hawthorne. Western Bulldogs, B. Hall, one vote. Western Bulldogs, R. Griffin, two votes. Western Bulldogs, M. Boyd, three votes. Fremantle versus Geelong. Fremantle, A. Sanderlands, one vote. Geelong, G. Ablett, two votes. Fremantle, M. Pavlich, three votes. Round four, West Coast versus Essendon. Essendon, J. Watson, one vote. West Coast, D. Cox, two votes. West Coast, M. Prittis, three votes. North Melbourne versus Sydney. Sydney, D. Bradshaw, one vote. Sydney, A. Goods, two votes. Sydney, D. Hannabury, three votes. Adelaide versus Carlton. Carlton, M. Cruiser, one vote. Carlton, K. Simpson, two votes. Carlton, C. Judd, three votes. Collingwood versus Hawthorne. Collingwood, L. Davis, one vote. Collingwood, H. Shaw, two votes. Collingwood, D. Swan, three votes. Brisbane versus Western Bulldogs. Brisbane, J. Brown, one vote. Brisbane, M. Riscatelli, two votes. Brisbane, J. Brennan, three votes. Melbourne versus Richmond. Melbourne, B. Maloney, one vote. Melbourne, James McDonald, two votes. Melbourne, B. Green, three votes. Geelong versus Port Adelaide. Geelong, G. Ablett, one vote. Geelong, J. Podziadley, two votes. Geelong, H. Taylor, three votes. St Kilda versus Fremantle. St Kilda, B. Goddard, one vote. Fremantle, A. Sanderlands, two votes. St Kilda, N. Del Santo, three votes. Another round and another loss to the Crows, this time to the resurgent Bulldogs. Not the traditional close finish between these teams. The Swans trounced the Eagles for their best start to a season in 12 years. New recruit Daniel Bradshaw kicking six for the visitors. Jack Trengove and the youngsters inspired the Ds to the round's first upset win over the undefeated Lions. And even Milne's brilliance couldn't stop the round's second surprise result. Roden was in and under everywhere, while Treadray was just letting it all hang out. Big crowd, big event, big venue, but a big fizzer, as a seven-goal first quarter to the Pies meant there was never a chance for the Bombers. The Hawks had little option but to throw Ruffhead into the ruck, but even he couldn't get them over the line against the Ruse in a tight finish in Tassie. Richmond kicked the first five goals of the game, and it looked like another upset was on the card, but Frio settled to run out comfortable winners. Ablett picked up 33 touches, but it wasn't enough as Carlton's live wire forward line made Geelong look flat footed in the last upset of the round. Round five Western Bulldogs versus Adelaide. Western Bulldogs, B. Hall, one vote. Western Bulldogs, D. G. and Syracuse, two votes. Western Bulldogs, R. Griffin, three votes. Sydney Swans versus West Coast. Sydney Swans, J. McVeigh, one vote. Sydney Swans, D. Bradshaw, two votes. Sydney Swans, R. O'Keefe, three votes. Melbourne versus Brisbane. Melbourne, N. Jones, one vote. Melbourne, J. Frawley, two votes. Melbourne, B. Maloney, three votes. Port Adelaide versus St Kilda. Port Adelaide, T. Chaplin, one vote. St Kilda, A. Schneider, two votes. Port Adelaide, D. Roden, three votes. Collingwood versus Essendon. Collingwood, J. Fraser, one vote. Collingwood, B. Johnson, two votes. Collingwood, S. Pendlebury, three votes. Hawthorne versus North Melbourne. North Melbourne, B. Rawlings, one vote. Hawthorne, L. Hodge, two votes. North Melbourne, D. Wells, three votes. Fremantle versus Richmond. Fremantle, D. Mundy, one vote. Fremantle, M. Barlow, two votes. Fremantle, A. Sanderlands, three votes. Geelong versus Carlton. Geelong, G. Ablett, one vote. Carlton, J. Garlett, two votes. Carlton, C. Judd, three votes. Well, 
Aaron Sandlins has got the room going as we check the uh, leaderboard after five completed rounds. Look at that, 12 votes already for the Dockers Ruckman. Jonathan Brown is on eight. Jared Brennan, his teammate on seven. Gary Ablett has six. Chris Judd from Carlton also has six. Over the page, Ben McGlynn with six. Nick Revolt and Riscatelli on the same score. And Ryan Griffin and Luke Hodge on five votes apiece. Aaron has just left the room. He might be going to put a bet on himself. Who knows? Our leader after round five of the Brownlow medal from the Fremantle Dockers is Aaron Sanderlands. Now you kicked a goal or two. Uh, how many did you actually snag at the end of the night? Four. Just a lazy four. Not a lazy one. It's hot work out there, isn't it? He's a showman, there's no doubt about that, mate. Where did you get those wheels? Oh. eBay. You got them on eBay? Yeah. Well, how do you feel when they lose games of football? Uh, bad. Bad. What happens? What do you do? I have a hissy fit. Oh, you have a hissy fit? <laughs> I tell you what, Stephen, he's a powerhouse of a man, but he doesn't have much to say for himself, so this might not go for too long now. Oliver, firstly, why, why are you wearing the skins, mate? What are they all about? So I don't get itchy. Oh, they stop you getting itchy. Any last words? No. I knew that would be the answer. You like Cameron Ling? What do you like about Cameron Ling? He's a good player for an ugly person. Oh. <laughs> He's a good player for an ugly person. <laughs> Warwick Kappa, eat your heart out. Beautiful pink boots. Join in the chorus and sing a while. Join in the chorus. Some Melbourne's on the board. Going in to Melbourne. A jump on you was great. The man on you was coming out. That's for you or me. Watch out. Watch for them camouflaged in the crouched in the shadows. Where they couldn't hold a candle up to you. Oh, yes, we've loved following our NAB Oz kickers right throughout season 2010. And a big thank you to NAB who are great supporters of football at all levels. Let's go back to our Channel 10 predictor. And we'll have a look at Carlton captain Chris Judd. He's polled uh, six votes so far. And there's uh, many games throughout season 2010 we are expecting the Carlton captain to pick up some votes. And the flyer of the night is Aaron Sandlins. It was predicted he'd get six to this date. He's already doubled that expectation with 12, bearing in mind that uh, he misses three games at the end of the year. And for the remainder of the night, for those of you at home want to follow who is in fact leading the Brownlow medal count, there'll be a ticker box over my shoulder to do just that. The D's bubble was burst by the Ruse, ending a three-game winning streak. It was showdown time in the city of Churches, but it was another letdown by the Crows, as their cross-down rivals came from behind to score a stirring victory. Buddy was the only beacon of hope in an otherwise bleak night for the Hawks. Watson led from the front for the winners, while Slattery forced a controversial behind. Jude was wearing wobbly boots, while Daniel Bradshaw donned the super boot as he led the Swans to victory over his old side. This will be a lesson for young kids at home. Oh, he's he's gone to it. It's going. Oh. It's going. Oh, oh, my my God. God. J Pod kicked another five as the Cats trounced the Tigers. Another round, another big event game for the Pies, this time against the Blues. Swan and Judd were standouts with 31 and 37 possessions respectively. Round six, Western Bulldogs versus St Kilda. St Kilda, Al Montagna, one vote. Western Bulldogs, Jay Harbrow, two votes. St Kilda, Al Hayes, one, uh, three votes. North Melbourne versus Melbourne. North Melbourne, M Ferrito, one vote. Melbourne, C Bruce, two votes. North Melbourne, D Wells, three votes. Adelaide versus Port Adelaide. Port Adelaide, D Cassisi, one vote. Port Adelaide, D Roden, two votes. Port Adelaide, R Gray, three votes. Essendon versus Hawthorne. Essendon, D Fletcher, one vote. Essendon, B Stanton, two votes. Essendon, J Watson, three votes. Sydney versus Brisbane. Sydney, J Bolton, one vote. Sydney, K Jack, two votes. Sydney, D Bradshaw, three votes. Geelong versus Richmond. Geelong, S Johnson, one vote. Geelong, J Podziadli, two votes. Geelong, J Selwood, three votes. Carlton versus Collingwood. Collingwood, L Ball, one vote. 
Collingwood, D Swan, two votes. Carlton, C Judd, three votes. West Coast versus Fremantle. Fremantle, M Pavlich, one vote. Fremantle, P Duffield, two votes. Fremantle, M Barlow, three votes. Pink was the colour of the night, which did cause some confusion. But with 39 possessions, there was no confusion as to why Tom Scully was the number one draft choice. Sports surprised the Dons that Eddie had, which had Choco smiling. But even after continued good form and a dominant display against the Roos, some coaches are hard to please. I didn't think today's game was exceptional. Roughhead kicked six goals three, but the Hawks still lost their sixth in a row. After 15 years, Frio broke its Gabba hoodoo. Geelong brought Sydney back to earth with a thud, with Shane Mumford doing the same to his old teammate. It was a chance for either team to go from none to one win. The Crows comfortable victors in the end. Monday night football was popular with the fans as the pace of the Blues upset the favoured Saints. Round seven, Melbourne versus Western Bulldogs. Western Bulldogs, S Higgins, one vote. Western Bulldogs, DG and Syracuse, two votes. Melbourne, T Scully, three votes. Essendon versus Port Adelaide. Essendon, B Stanton, one vote. Essendon, J Watson, two votes. Port Adelaide, D Pierce, three votes. West Coast versus Hawthorne. West Coast, M Prittis, one vote. West Coast, M Lacra, two votes. West Coast, J Kennedy, three votes. Collingwood versus North Melbourne. Collingwood, S Sidebottom, one vote. Collingwood, D Swan, two votes. Collingwood, A Didac, three votes. Brisbane versus Fremantle. Brisbane, S Black, one vote. Fremantle, M Pavlich, two votes. Fremantle, S Hill, three votes. Geelong versus Sydney. Geelong, C Enright, one vote. Geelong, J Poziadli, two votes. Geelong, G Ablett, three votes. Adelaide versus Richmond. Adelaide. I. Marich, one vote. Adelaide, S. Goodwin, two votes. Adelaide, A. McLeod, three votes. St Kilda versus Carlton. Carlton, J. Russell, one vote. Carlton, E. Betts, two votes. Carlton, C. Judd, three votes. After a dream start to the season, Fremantle was given a rude awakening by a dominant Collingwood outfit led by Travis Cloak with five goals. Big Baz came up against his old teammates in Canberra. The Dogs too good for the Swans. The Eagles managed their first win at the MCG in three years. It was a masterclass at the Gabba, the usual suspects leading the way for the Premiers. The Crows came barnstorming home with seven last quarter goals, but it still wasn't enough. The Kangaroos holding on by nine points. Sean Burgoyne finally made his debut for Hawthorne as they just held on to win against an improving Richmond. It was four wins in five as the Blues won a tight contest against the Power. And St Kilda's slip in form continued against a spirited Essendon. When are you back, Nick? Round eight, Fremantle versus Collingwood. Fremantle, A. Sanderlands, one vote. Collingwood, T. Cloak, two votes. Collingwood, S. Pendlebury, three votes. Western Bulldogs versus Sydney. Western Bulldogs, B. Lake, one vote. Sydney, A. Goods, two votes. Western Bulldogs, B Hall, three votes. Melbourne versus West Coast. West Coast, M Lacra, one vote. Melbourne, James McDonald, two votes. West Coast, M Prittis, three votes. Brisbane versus Geelong. Geelong, J Selwood, one vote. Geelong, P Chapman, two votes. Geelong, S Johnson, three votes. North Melbourne versus Adelaide. North Melbourne, D Wells, one vote. North Melbourne, A Swallow, two votes. North Melbourne, B Rawlings, three votes. Richmond versus Hawthorne. Richmond, D Jackson, one vote. Richmond, T Cochin, two votes. Hawthorne, S Mitchell, three votes. Port Adelaide versus Carlton. Port Adelaide, T Boak, one vote. Carlton, K Simpson, two votes. Carlton, C Judd, three votes. Essendon versus St Kilda. Essendon, H Ocking, one vote. St Kilda, Al Hayes, two votes. Essendon, D Hill, three votes. Now, let's not forget that Chris Judd missed the start of the season because of suspension in last year's final series. He has now polled five best on grounds in a row. 
and uh, he leads the count from two from Aaron Sandlins. Gary Ablett, Matt Prittis and Dane Swan all on nine votes. As we go over the page, Jonathan Brown on eight along with Matthew Pavlich and Scott Pendlebury. Michael Barlow has seven, as does Essendon's Joe Watson. So our leader after round eight of the Brownlow medal is Carlton captain Chris Judd. Coming up next, we remember arguably the greatest grand final of the morning. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tim Lay to the stage. This weekend will mark the 40th anniversary of perhaps the greatest event in the history of our game. It was the 1970 VFL Grand Final between Collingwood and Carlton. The two great old rivals fought it out before an all-time record crowd of 121,696. Their contest would produce the biggest ever grand final comeback and change the way the game would be played in the future. Recently, the heroic winning coach that day caught up with four of his men to share a drink, a tall story or two, and to reminisce about that remarkable day 40 years ago. Collingwood, late 60s, 70, they were the main rival to Carlton. The lead up to the grand final was huge because of Carlton Collingwood and rivalry, it was, you know, it was really intense. I can remember just the massive crowd. It was the biggest crowd ever, still is. John Nichols leads Carlton. Hitting up the ground and the noise was just overwhelming, just overwhelming. A crowd on grand final day has got a sort of a feeling to it. It's just fantastic. Muffled by Collingwood's blistering pace, Carlton's defence is ragged. They were doing everything right, we were doing everything wrong. We are slow, we were behind. Dunn traps it, Dunn gets around onto his left boot. He shoots at the big oh, one at this, a left foot of two. I think I could see what was unfolding before last week. A lack of pace in the Carlton team. They were chasing tail too much. Collingwood were ripping away much sharper. Inside. Oh, just a leg go, you beauty! I'd seen Jezza take, you know, screamer after screamer over the years, uh, but that one was pretty special. Short of half time, Tottenham kicks his second goal from the flank, and the Blues' position is desperate. The thing I can remember at half-time is being embarrassed. We'd hardly given a yell. We're 40-odd points behind, and uh, it was just going to be like the worst day of your life. I can remember going into the rooms at half-time, and I grabbed hold of our stats guys. I said, what's one of the handball figures? And I think the answer was 16. And when Ron came out and he said, well, for weeks you've been practicing this uh, handball from the back line, so we're going to try and do that because uh, all, you do, all you guys are doing is chasing these guys and uh, we want to turn it around so they're chasing us. Carlton replaces Thornley with Hopkins. Twelve times during the season, more than any other senior player in the competition, Hopkins has been on the reserves bench. So, yeah, I was well prepared because I'd sat a lot of games on the bench and had an occasional run, and when you knew that, you, you know, the coach said yes, you had to get into the game quickly. Balls a quick hand pass to Hopkins. Hopkins in a bit of trouble, but he shoots. He's got it through. Everything was starting to turn around then. Hootie Jackson uh, was, was, was hard in the, in the forward pocket, and he hooked it over the only shoulder on the left foot and went through with it. Hey, the game's changing here. Everybody realised that, and, uh, in that especially in the, the last quarter, and um, we we're fully full of running in the last quarter. Jackson, Jackson goes after now. Jackson... Every time I got the ball, or where I was near, I looked up and there was there was Ted Hopkins in front of me. So. It, it, was, uh, it was fantastic that he was there, and um, I was able to assist him with some of those goals, so um, maybe three of them. And I've been sitting there with um, Percy Jones, Sid Jackson, Robert Walls now, 
Each one of them is claiming two goal assists, so that means I think I've kicked six goals rather than four. <laughs> On a slight angle, Brent Crosswell. Done a twirl. Zelenko dashes in to kick to the unguarded goal. Home roaring out. He turned around his left foot and he kicked it and it bounced and bounced and bounced and bounced and rolled through it and put us 10 points up. From that moment, uh, I think we knew that we um, had a big chance then. The sudden stand and people stood up. Amazing. I think I limped up into heaven. <laughs> there is a photo of me leaping up off the bench, yeah, and, and that's what I felt like. It was like an explosion of joy um, of others. And I can remember some uh, excited band just running onto the ground and just holding me. All of us we were all screaming and yelling and hugging each other, and I said, um, just not re really realising that you won it, but you, you knew you won it, but um, you couldn't believe that you won it. Fantastic comeback. They were going to the world at half time. I just go back to the overwhelming joy of everybody around me, and then when I start to run on the field, the players, I mean, the players are beside themselves. Naturally, they pull off one of the greatest feveries in, <laughs> in world sport, I think. Brassie said after the game, he said, he said, you'll be heroes forever after that. And, and it was exactly right. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage 1966 All-Australian and a member of that famous 1970 Carlton team, John Ragsy Gould. Thank you, Tim. Good evening, everyone. Ragsy, I think you got the name because, not because you were a dashing flamboyant halfback flanker, but because you were a dashing flamboyant ladies underwear marketer off the field. Now, how did that stand up when you got out in the parry and thrust of on-field combat? Oh, you should ask Des Tatnam. I think he called me a poof the whole time I played in about eight years. <laughs> <laughs> we still happen to be mates. You might like poofs after all, Des. <laughs> the famous game, post-war conservatism had moved on to revolution in the age of Aquarius. Was this the game for its time? Well, it's fascinating. You know, we're in a time capsule with football. Every year, the same issues arise, no matter, it's only a change of name. And if you reflect, Back in 68, Carlton won a flag, and we had a better side in 69, and Richmond came from fourth when we only had four teams in it, which was, I think, one of the few times ever the side that finished fourth actually won the flag, knocked us off by something like 10 points. And I'll never forget, after that game, the travesty and the feeling, the disgrace of failing, letting your teammates down, letting your supporters down, it was mortifying. And the look of anguish and distress only reminded me of St Kilda last year. And in the end, grand finals are won by attitude. And it's very few teams that haven't suffered that terrible, disgusting, rotten, stinking feeling of losing a grand final and then have to crack the next year. And that attitude and development of that attitude, that even at half time, they all talk about Brass, who was a wonderful bloke, a great mentor, what he did. But no, what really happened, I think the reason why we won the, the grand final was we looked at each other at half time. We realised the taste of the grand final the year before, and it was just a mindset, and we were prepared to do whatever was required with that desperation it takes to win a grand final. Grand finals are bloody hard to win. Very quickly, is the greatest game of all time tag justified? Oh, look, I think one should never self proclaim their own games, but uh, there's been a lot of great games of football played, a lot of wonderful people. The 60s era, I've just been mixing with them tonight just reminds me of what incredible super group of blokes who never got paid any money, all there with one reason, they want to go and play footy. And I would never suggest we've had better games. It certainly was a pretty special grand final. Ladies and gentlemen, please thank John Gould. <laughs> We're taking a break at the 2010 Brownlow count, following the next of our Toyota memorable moments of the decade. Alas, Jez's mark isn't eligible. Welcome back to the Brownlow Medal Count for 2010. We've been delving into the records. We can never find 
a fact that one player has polled five consecutive best on grounds. Going back into our records, Justin Madden, Shane Crawford and Brent Harvey are all recorded as uh, notching up four best on grounds in a row, but never has a player notched up five consecutive best on grounds. And Chris Judd is our leader. Aaron Sandlins is second on 13. Gary Ablett has nine, along with Matt Prittis and Dane Swan. Let's go to the Channel 10 predictor and uh, focus in on Luke Hodge. Uh, currently, he has only got five votes, so he's a little bit behind the eight ball at the moment, but uh, there's plenty of games coming up where Luke Hodge plays well. And Brennan Goddard, another big fancy tonight. He's also started pretty slowly, but again, he finishes the season in very strong fashion. For the second week in a row, Collingwood were looking to defend top spot on the AFL ladder. But in front of 88,000, the Pies were brought down a run in a second half blitz by the all conquering Cats. The Dogs had a stranglehold on the game from the very start and went on to win comfortably in a spiteful one against the Roos. Well, I mean, if you have three blokes coming at you, what are you supposed to do? Actually, cop it. It wasn't always pretty, but Pavlich and Hazelby led the Dockers to an SCG victory, their first in 14 years. It was dream time at the G, but even with Revolt making his presence felt, Richmond's nightmare season continued at the hands of Essendon. At the top end, Melbourne just managed to end on top in hot and humid conditions. Win two for the struggling Crows against an out-of-form Lions. Buddy fired, an unsociable football was back as Hawthorne accounted for a disappointing Carlton. And Lenny Hayes inspired the Saints to their first win in three weeks. Round nine, Collingwood versus Geelong. Collingwood beat Johnson one vote. Geelong, Jay Selwood, two votes. Geelong, Jay Bartell, three votes. North Melbourne versus Western Bulldogs. Western Bulldogs, Jay Harbrow, one vote. Western Bulldogs, A. Cooney, two votes. Western Bulldogs, B. Lake, three votes. Sydney versus Fremantle. Fremantle, M. Pavlich, one vote. Fremantle, N. Fife, two votes. Fremantle, D. Mundy, three votes. Essendon versus Richmond. Essendon, B. Prismal, one vote. Essendon, J. Watson, two votes. Essendon, D. Hill, three votes. Melbourne versus Port Adelaide. Melbourne, C. Sylvia, one vote. Melbourne, A. Davey, two votes. Port Adelaide, T. Boak, three votes. Adelaide versus Brisbane. Brisbane, A. McGrath, one vote. Adelaide, N. Van Burlo, two votes. Adelaide, R. Douglas, three votes. Carlton versus Hawthorne. Hawthorne, S. Mitchell, one vote. Carlton, A. Scotland, two votes. Hawthorne, L. Franklin, three votes. West Coast Eagles versus St Kilda. St Kilda, B. Goddard, one vote. St Kilda, F. Ray, two votes. St Kilda, Al Hayes, three votes. After a controversial week, the dogs were disappointing as the Bombers took another big scalp. It was perfect weather for Ducks and the Tigers broke theirs. In a slippery clash that saw the tackle record smashed and Luke McGuan's tackle nearly. Well, you get the picture. Fev brought out the party tricks to help celebrate Luke Powers' 250th amid stirring scenes at the Gabba. St Kilda broke free of Adelaide in the final quarter as Lee Montagna, with 38 touches and five goals, led the Saints to a 47-point victory. The Hawks wore camouflage to honour the Kokoda Diggers, but couldn't hide another buddy bump. Bryce Gibbs equaled Diesel's record of 45 possessions, but was he in the best? No, stats, uh, don't worry about stats. Jeff Gallant was best on ground by a country mile. And there was no brotherly love between the Scott twins as Fremantle flogged North Melbourne. Really nice. Round 10, Essendon versus Western Bulldogs. Essendon, B. Stanton, one vote. Essendon, J. Watson, two votes. Essendon, P. Ryder, three votes. Geelong versus Melbourne. Geelong, J. Selwood, one vote. Geelong, J. Poziadley, two votes. Geelong, G. Ablett, three votes. Port Adelaide versus Richmond. Richmond, S. Tuck, one vote. Richmond, B. Deledio, two votes. Richmond, C. Newman, three votes. Brisbane versus Collingwood. Brisbane, B. Staker, one vote. Collingwood, D. Thomas, two votes. Brisbane, L. Power, three votes. St Kilda versus Adelaide. St Kilda, N. Del Santo, one vote. Adelaide, R. Douglas, two votes. 
St Kilda, Al Montagna, three votes. Hawthorne versus Sydney, Hawthorne S Mitchell, one vote. Hawthorne J Lewis, two votes. Sydney D Hanbury, three votes. Carlton versus West Coast, Carlton S O'Helpen, one vote. Carlton M Murphy, two votes. Carlton B Gibbs, three votes. Fremantle versus North Melbourne, Fremantle J Van Burlo, one vote. Fremantle N Fife, two votes. Fremantle, D. Mundy, three votes. There's nothing unusual about a St Kilda match with a revolt dominating. But this time, it was Jack for the Tigers, whilst Tyson Edwards hung up the boots after a stellar career of 321 games. Lindsay bombed one through in his socks, and Levi wobbled one through from the pocket. Or did it come from somewhere else to secure a one-point win for the Kangaroos? 36 possessions for Paul Chapman in a best-on-ground performance in Geelong's ninth win of the season against the Eagles. With 17 lead changes for the game, it was a case of who was going to have their nose in front on the final siren. Sydney did by nine points. Another unconvincing win, but the Hawks' season was starting to go in the right direction. Even if the same couldn't be said for some of their players. Just going the wrong way. And with another loss and another injury, doubts were raised about the Dogs' premiership aspirations. Round 11. Richmond versus St Kilda. Richmond, J Revolt, one vote. St Kilda, S Milne, two votes. St Kilda, B Goddard, three votes. Carlton versus Melbourne. Carlton, H Scotland, one vote. Carlton, C. Judd, two votes. Melbourne, B. Maloney, three votes. Adelaide versus Fremantle. Adelaide, G. Johncock, one vote. Fremantle, M. Barlow, two votes. Adelaide, S. Thompson, three votes. North Melbourne versus Brisbane. North Melbourne, A. Swallow, one vote. Brisbane, L. Power, two votes. Brisbane, T. Johnston, three votes. West Coast Eagles versus Geelong. Geelong, S. Burns, one vote. West Coast, B Waters, two votes. Geelong, P Chapman, three votes. Sydney versus Essendon. Essendon, J Watson, one vote. Sydney, J Bolton, two votes. Sydney, S Mumford, three votes. Hawthorne versus Port Adelaide. Hawthorne, L Hodge, one vote. Port Adelaide, T Boak, two votes. Hawthorne, B Sewell, three votes. Collingwood versus Western Bulldogs. Collingwood, L Davis, one vote. Collingwood, S Pendlebury, two votes. Western Bulldogs, M Boyd, three votes. We're at the halfway mark of the Brownlow medal count for 2010, and it's Chris Judd, the captain of Carlton, leading the way. Boy, what a first half of the season he had. And remember, he missed the start of the year because of suspension. Judd is on 17, Sandilands is on 13, Ablett and Watson have a dozen each, and Scott Pendlebury is also on the first page. Also in the count, Michael Barlow, Travis Boak, David Mundy, Matthew Pavlich and Matt Prittis. Time now for number two in our Toyota Moments of the Decade. And we go back to Jason McCarthy. Welcome back to the Brownlow Medal of 2010. Carlton captain Chris Judd is our leader. But for Magpie fans, do not despair. Let's uh, focus in on Dane Swan and have a look at the Channel 10 predictor. The computer believes this is when Swan starts making a very strong run at it. Look at all the votes that uh, the computer predicts Swan will get over the next few rounds. Celebrating 25 years of Friday Night Football, Lindsay Thomas seemed to channel some old school cracker magic. The Hawks were finally into the eight after their fifth straight win. Rioli and Hodge vying for best on ground honours. All of the cats seem to take note of the pre-game goal kicking instruction video, slotting home 23 in a comfortable win against the Bombers. A perfect 10 for Jack Revolt as the Tigers notched up their second win for the season. Barry kicked six and the Bulldogs were back on the winning list, defeating a Lions outfit minus Jonathan Brown. St Kilda reminded everyone of their Premiership credentials with a hard-fought win against Frio in the West. After their last encounter, 
No one thought it could get any closer, but they were wrong. Scores tied up on the final siren in the Queen's birthday clash at the G. Round 12, Richmond versus West Coast. Richmond, D. Martin, one vote. Richmond, B. Deledio, two votes. Richmond, J. Revolt, three votes. Western Bulldogs versus Brisbane Lions. Western Bulldogs, B. Hall, one vote. Western Bulldogs, A. Cooney, two votes. Western Bulldogs, B. Lake, three votes. Port Adelaide versus Sydney. Sydney, R. O'Keefe, one vote. Sydney, J. Bolton, two votes. Sydney, N. Malchewski, three votes. Hawthorne versus Adelaide. Hawthorne, J. Lewis, one vote. Hawthorne, C. Rioli, two votes. Hawthorne, L. Hodge, three votes. Essendon versus Geelong. Geelong, T. Varco, one vote. Geelong, J. Podziadli, two votes. Geelong, J. Bartell, three votes. Melbourne versus Collingwood. Melbourne, M. Jamar, one vote. Collingwood, D. Swan, two votes. Melbourne, A. Davey, three votes. Fremantle versus St Kilda. St Kilda. S. Milne, one vote. St Kilda. S. Gilbert, two votes. St Kilda, B. Goddard, three votes. North Melbourne versus Carlton. North Melbourne, M. Ferrito, one vote. North Melbourne, S. Thompson, two votes. North Melbourne, L. Thomas, three votes. The opening match of the split round. And, well, nothing else needs to be said about this one. Man running back towards the goal square. Needs to be closer. He can't bounce it. Oh, he kicks it through on the ball. A season-ending injury to Matthew Cruiser. And Chris Judd had his own niggle to worry about. Brisbane's year was on the slide. Whilst the Tigers were on the up, winning their second game in a row. There were murmurings of an inaugural wooden spoon for the Eagles as they were mauled by the Dogs. It was a spiteful grand final replay and there were casualties on both sides as the Saints prevail. Another loss for Sydney against Collingwood. No wonder Rusey lost his cool. And Melbourne couldn't break their Adelaide hoodoo. Round 13, Adelaide versus Melbourne. Adelaide, K Tippett, one vote. Adelaide, S Goodwin, two votes. Adelaide, G. John Cock, three votes. North Melbourne versus Port Adelaide. North Melbourne, L. Hanson, one vote. Port Adelaide, J. Schultz, two votes. North Melbourne, B. Harvey, three votes. West Coast versus Western Bulldogs. Western Bulldogs, M. Boyd, one vote. Western Bulldogs, D. Cross, two votes. Western Bulldogs, J. Harbrow, three votes. Brisbane versus Richmond. Brisbane, T. Johnston, one vote. Richmond, D. Martin, two votes. Richmond, B. Deledio, three votes. Hawthorne versus Essendon. Essendon, J. Watson, one vote. Hawthorne, C. Rioli, two votes. Hawthorne, L. Franklin, three votes. Sydney versus Collingwood. Sydney, N. Malchewski, one vote. Collingwood, D. Swan, two votes. Collingwood, H. Shaw, three votes. St Kilda versus Geelong. St Kilda, El Montaigne, one vote. Geelong, G. Ablett, two votes. St Kilda, L. Hayes, three votes. Carlton versus Fremantle. Fremantle, A. Sanderlands, one vote. Carlton, C. Judd, two votes. Fremantle, M. Barlow, three votes. The Carlton faithful didn't get to see Fev back in Melbourne, but they still had plenty to smile about as the Blues trounced an injury-depleted Brisbane. It was tighter the next night at the MCG, the Hawks winning by three points to make it seven in a row. In the West, an horrific injury ended the brilliant debut season of Michael Barlow, whilst Choco predicted the end of his own coaching tenure. The club is certainly uh, bigger than any individual. Uh, they, uh understanding of where uh, you know coaching careers start and finish I, I understand it all the pies smacked the eagles adelaide were too good for essendon 
And the Cats won comfortably at their fortress in Geelong. Whatever works. The Tigers were down, but never out, continuing their stunning form reversal with a four-point win against the Swans. And things didn't always go St Kilda's way in their win over Melbourne. Round 14, Richmond versus Sydney. Sydney, R. O'Keefe, one vote. Richmond, Jay Revolt, two votes. Sydney, Jay Bolton, three votes. Hawthorne versus Western Bulldogs. Hawthorne, L. Hodge, one vote. Western Bulldogs, M. Boyd, two votes. Hawthorne, S. Mitchell, two, three votes. St Kilda versus Melbourne. St Kilda, B. Goddard, one vote. St Kilda, L. Montagna, two votes. St Kilda, C. Jones, three votes. Adelaide versus Essendon. Adelaide, K. Tippett, one vote. Adelaide, P. Dangerfield, two votes. Adelaide, S. Thompson, three votes. Collingwood versus West Coast. Collingwood, D. Swan, one vote. Collingwood, A. Didac, two votes. Collingwood, D. Jolly, three votes. Fremantle versus Port Adelaide. Fremantle, R. Palmer, one vote. Fremantle, A. Morabito, two votes. Fremantle, R. Crowley, three votes. Geelong versus North Melbourne. Geelong, C. Enright, one vote. Geelong, J. Selwood, two votes. Geelong, J. Podziadli, three votes. Carlton versus Brisbane. Carlton, E. Betts, one vote. Carlton, K. Simpson, two votes. Carlton, C. Judd, three votes. Chris Judd is streeting the field at the moment. Now, he moves on to 22 votes. Back in 1998, when Robert Harvey won the Brownlow medal, after 14 rounds, he had 22. And last year, when Gary Ablett won the Brownlow, after 14 rounds, he had 22 votes. Ablett's on 14 this year. Sandilands and Swan also on 14. Joe Watson from the Bombers has 13 votes. J-Pod doing very well. James Podziadli on 13. Barlow has a dozen and 11 each to Goddard, Hayes and Sam Mitchell. Now it's time for our Toyota number one. Carlton captain Chris Judd is now the favourite for the 2010 Brownlow medal after 14 completed rounds. Let's have a look at the top five. He's on 22 votes. Gary Ablett and Aaron Sandilands and Dane Swan all tied for second on 14. And Joe Watson from the Bombers on 13. After 274 games, Mark Williams said goodbye to Port Adelaide. Another modern classic was played between fierce rivals Geelong and Hawthorne at the G. The West Coast first wooden spoon looked more likely with a loss to Adelaide. St Nick was back, but not everyone was pleased to see him. And Nick himself wasn't pleased when told to spend more time on the bench. The bench also proved to be an issue for Fremantle, giving Jack Revolt his fifth goal and Richmond their fourth win in a row. Though the interchange stewards weren't the only one to make a howler. Adam Goods was given a free run in the midfield, clocking up 33 possessions in Sydney's win. Matthew Knights and the umpires just couldn't see eye to eye. And a flat Carlton was no match for the Western Bulldogs, as Barry kicked six, keeping the Dogs' top four dreams alive. Round 15, West Coast versus Adelaide. Adelaide R. Henderson, one vote. Adelaide S. Goodwin, two votes. Adelaide S. Thompson, three votes. Sydney versus North Melbourne. Sydney, S. Mumford, one vote. Sydney, T. T Canelli, two votes. Sydney, A. Goods, three votes. Melbourne versus Essendon. Melbourne, C. Sylvia, one vote. Melbourne, M. Jamar, two votes. Melbourne, B. Green, three votes. Brisbane versus St Kilda. St Kilda, S. Gilbert, one vote. Brisbane, S. Black, two votes. St Kilda, L. Montagna, three votes. Richmond versus Fremantle. Fremantle, A. Sanderlands, one vote. Richmond, D. Martin, two votes. Richmond, D. Connors, three votes. Geelong versus Hawthorne. Geelong, J. Selwood, one vote. Hawthorne, C. Rioli, two votes. Geelong, 
M. Stokes, three votes. Carlton versus Western Bulldogs. Western Bulldogs, A. Cooney, one vote. Western Bulldogs, M. Boyd, two votes. Western Bulldogs, B. Hall, three votes. Port Adelaide versus Collingwood. Collingwood, C. Dawes, one vote. Collingwood, D. Swan, two votes. Port Adelaide, D. Roden, three votes. It was a forgettable week for the reigning premiers, going down to a determined Adelaide outfit. In front of over 80,000 fans, Dane Swan once again notched up over 30 disposals in Collingwood's win over St Kilda. Another Brownlow fancy, Luke Hodge, also led the way in the Hawks' old-fashioned drubbing of the Lions. From Tassie to the top end, and the Dogs kept up the pressure on the top four with a win over Port Adelaide. There was only one person they were talking about. Don't tell me. Yeah. As the Eagles' small forward kicked 12 goals against the Bombers, putting the blowtorch back on Matthew Knights and his charges. Ben Cousins was back to his best after another controversial week, but the Roos still dominated to keep their finals hopes alive. Round 16, Richmond versus North Melbourne. North Melbourne, Al Adams, one vote. North Melbourne, D Wells, two votes. North Melbourne, A Swallow, three votes. Hawthorne versus Brisbane. Hawthorne, B Guerra, one vote. Hawthorne, J Lewis, two votes. Hawthorne, S Burgoyne, three votes. Essendon versus West Coast. West Coast, A Embley, one vote. West Coast, M Prittis, two votes. West Coast, M Lacra, three votes. Western Bulldogs versus Port Adelaide. Western Bulldogs, D Cross, one vote. Western Bulldogs, J Harbrow, two votes. Western Bulldogs, M. Boyd, three votes. Fremantle versus Melbourne. Fremantle, A. Morabito, one vote. Melbourne, C. Sylvia, two votes. Fremantle, H. Ballantyne, three votes. Adelaide versus Geelong. Adelaide, T. Walker, one vote. Adelaide, G. Johncock, two votes. Geelong, J. Selwood, three votes. Collingwood versus St Kilda. Collingwood, D. Thomas, one vote. Collingwood, D. Swan, two votes. Collingwood, A. Didac, three votes. Carlton versus Sydney. Sydney, S. Mumford, one vote. Sydney, H. Grundy, two votes. Sydney, A. Goods, three votes. Let's have a look at our leaderboard after 16 completed rounds and Dane Swan is starting to make his move. Chris Judd is still the leader on 22, Swan on 18, Boyd from the Bulldogs moves up to 15 along with Aaron Sandlins. Gary Ablett is stuck on 14 at the moment, Lee Montagna up to 13, Geelong's Joel Selwood and Joe Watson and James Podziadley also have 13 and Michael Barlow rounds out the top 10 with a dozen. Our leader after 16 rounds of the Brownlow medal is Chris Judd. As we go to the break, let's have a look at more colour and fashion from tonight's blue carpet. Let's have a look at the top five and Chris Judd leads the way on 22 votes. Dane Swan starting to make his move. He's on 18. Matthew Boyd from the Bulldogs on 15 along with Fremantle's Aaron Sandilands and Geelong's Gary Ablett rounds out the top five on 14. The players couldn't keep their footing and the Hawks let their lead slip in a controversial night of football. Scores all tied up on the final side. Things were a bit more light-hearted in Collingwood's demolition of Richmond. Once again, Dane Swan was a standout with 37 possessions. Joel Selwood topped him, though, with 41 touches for Geelong on a day that saw Gary Ablett kick five. 
Three points was enough to make Essendon smile again after a week of media scrutiny. Juddy was good against his old team, helping the Blues to a come-from-behind victory. The Bulldogs said goodbye to Acker, but the on-field upset of the week saw Sydney suffer its biggest loss under Paul Ruse to a dominant Melbourne. Showdown time, and Matty Primus enjoyed his first win as coach. Round 17, Port Adelaide versus Adelaide. Port Adelaide, T. Boak, one vote. Port Adelaide, J. Westhoff, two votes. Port Adelaide, D. Cassisi, three votes. Melbourne versus Sydney. Melbourne, J. Frawley, one vote. Melbourne, A. Davey, two votes. Melbourne, C. Sylvia, three votes. North Melbourne versus Essendon. North Melbourne, A. Swallow, one vote. North Melbourne, B. Harvey, two votes. Essendon, J. Watson, three votes. St Kilda versus Hawthorne. Hawthorne, L. Franklin, one vote. St Kilda, L. Hayes, two votes. Hawthorne, L. Hodge, three votes. Western Bulldogs versus Fremantle. Western Bulldogs, D. Cross, one vote. Western Bulldogs, R. Griffin, two votes. Western Bulldogs, a. Cooney, three votes. West Coast Eagles versus Carlton. Carlton, C. Judd, one vote. Carlton, M. Murphy, two votes. Carlton, K. Simpson, three votes. Geelong versus Brisbane. Geelong, D. Milburn, one vote. Geelong, J. Selwood, two votes. Geelong, G. Ablett, three votes. Collingwood versus Richmond. Collingwood, L. Brown, one vote. Collingwood, A. Didak, two votes. Collingwood, D. Swan, three votes. A seven goal to one first quarter was enough to set up an upset result to start the round. The Saints were out of form, but the same certainly couldn't be said for the Pies as they smashed their old foe. Swan and Didak both good again for the victors. Port's win all but killed Hawthorne's top four dream, but it improved the coaching aspirations of Matthew Primus. Geelong, well, they did what they do best up in Sydney. Stevie J back to his mercurial best. Fair finished his season hobbling. At the G, the Tigers and Crows battled the elements. Whilst undercover at Eddie had, Barry was just able to keep his cool. Then the Dogs' big win. And were the mascots preempting things to come in the Derby? You betcha. The only thing not going Frio's way, the goal umpire. Round 18, Brisbane versus Melbourne. Melbourne, Joel McDonald, one vote. Melbourne, M. Jamar, two votes. Melbourne, C. Sylvia, three votes. Richmond versus Adelaide. Richmond, D. Martin, one vote. Richmond, B. Cousins, two votes. Richmond, S. Tuck, three votes. Port Adelaide versus Hawthorne. Port Adelaide, J. Westhoff, one vote. Hawthorne, B. Renouf, two votes. Port Adelaide, J. Schultz, three votes. <laughs> Essendon versus St Kilda. Essendon, A. Monfries, one vote. Essendon, B. Stanton, two votes. Essendon, D. Fletcher, three votes. Western Bulldogs versus North Melbourne. Western Bulldogs, D. Gian Syracuse, one vote. Western Bulldogs, B. Hall, two votes. Western Bulldogs, M. Boyd, three votes. Fremantle versus West Coast. Fremantle, N. Fife, one vote. Fremantle, A. Sanderlands, two votes. Fremantle, H. Ballantyne, three votes. Sydney versus Geelong. Geelong. J. Selwood, one vote. Geelong. G. Ablett, two votes. 
Geelong, S. Johnson, three votes. Collingwood versus Carlton. Collingwood, A. Didac, one vote. Collingwood, D. Beams, two votes. Collingwood, S. Pendlebury, three votes. Well, Andrew Dimitri is doing a beautiful job maintaining the suspension. And let's have a look at the leaderboard. It's Chris Judd on 23, Dane Swan on 21, Ablett on 19, Boyd on 18, Sandlin 17. Over the page, Joel Selwood on 16, along with Watson. Lenny Hayes has 13, as does Luke Hodge and Lee Montagler. So the suspense continues. Our leader after round 18 of the Brownlow Medal from Carlton, that man, Chris Judd. to go for the Brownlow medal and let's get our computer back to work and have a look at the predictor and we'll start with Dane Swan he has 21 votes and the computer predicts perhaps votes in two of the last four games Gary Ablett had a very strong finish maybe polling some votes in the last three games of the home and away season and Chris Judd the current leader again the computer says he might do well in the last four rounds. After Brett Ratton questioned his team's hardness, the Blues responded in emphatic style, kicking 10 goals in the final quarter. Whilst in Sydney, Lewis Jetta was happy to just kick one goal. North Melbourne and Melbourne both kept their September dreams alive with comfortable wins. At the top of the table, Collingwood's Premiership favouritism firmed as they dispatched the Geelong on a somewhat controversial night. At the other end of the ladder, Jonathan Brown all but handed the Eagles their first wooden spoon. And the Saints were back on the winners list as Nick Revolt's form continued to improve leading into September. Round 19, Melbourne versus Richmond. Richmond, D. Jackson, one vote. Melbourne, L. Jarrah, two votes. Melbourne, L. Dunn, three votes. West Coast versus Brisbane. Brisbane, J. Brown, one vote. West Coast, M. Prittis, two votes. Brisbane, M. Riscatelli, three votes. Sydney Swans versus Hawthorne. Sydney, R. O'Keefe, one vote. Sydney, B. McGlynn, two votes. Sydney, A. Goods, three votes. St Kilda versus Port Adelaide. St Kilda, A. Schneider, one vote. St Kilda, B. Goddard, two votes. St Kilda, L. Hayes, three votes. North Melbourne versus Fremantle. North Melbourne, L. Adams, one vote. North Melbourne, H. McIntosh, two votes. North Melbourne, B. Harvey, three votes. Adelaide versus Western Bulldogs. Adelaide, S. Thompson, one vote. Western Bulldogs, D. Cross, two votes. Western Bulldogs, D. Gian Syracuse, three votes. Geelong versus Collingwood. Geelong, J. Selwood, one vote. Collingwood. S. Pendlebury, two votes. Collingwood. S. Wellingham, three votes. Essendon versus Carlton. Carlton, M. Murphy, one vote. Carlton, J. Garlett, two votes. Carlton. C. Judd, three votes. Another big win and another stellar Dane Swan performance as the Collingwood machine rolled on towards September. 
It was just as one-sided the next day at the MCG as Chris Judd led Carlton to a comfortable victory. With five lead changes in the final term, the Swans found themselves in front on the sirens. The days of domination are over. Geelong has spent force. A 10-goal second quarter forced those who dared doubt the reigning Premier. It was much closer in Adelaide as Port scrambled a one-point victory in front of their poorest ever Amy Stadium crowd. Even Hodgie could smell the onset of September action as Hawthorne won a wet one against Melbourne. But for the Kangaroos, their loss meant no football in the final month as Nick Revold and Brendan Goddard showed outstanding form at the right time of the year. Round 20, Brisbane Lions versus Adelaide Crows. Brisbane, M. Clark, one vote. Adelaide, K. Tippett, two votes. Adelaide, R. Douglas, three votes. Port Adelaide versus West Coast. West Coast, A. Embley, one vote. Port Adelaide, M. Thomas, two votes. Port Adelaide, K. Corns, three votes. Hawthorne versus Melbourne. Hawthorne, L. Franklin, one vote. Hawthorne, S. Burgoyne, two votes. Hawthorne v Sewell, three votes. Fremantle versus Sydney. Fremantle, G Broughton, one vote. Sydney, K Jack, two votes. Sydney, D Hanbury, three votes. North Melbourne versus St Kilda. St Kilda, J Graham, one vote. St Kilda, N Revolt, two votes. St Kilda, L Hayes. Three votes. Western Bulldogs versus Geelong. Geelong, C. Enright, one vote. Geelong, J. Selwood, two votes. Geelong, G. Ablett, three votes. Essendon versus Collingwood. Collingwood. Jay Blair, one vote. Collingwood. D. Swan, two votes. Collingwood. S. Pendlebury, three votes. Carlton versus Richmond. Carlton, J. White, one vote. Carlton, L. Henderson, two votes. Carlton, C. Judd, three votes. So, Chris Judd, at the very worst, will share the Brownlow medal, but with two rounds to go, there is still a possibility there may be a tie. But let's check the top ten. Chris Judd on 29. Dane Swan needs two best on grounds. Gary Ablett has 22. Lenny Hayes on 19, as does Joel Selwood. Over the page as we round out the top ten. Matthew Boyd on 18, along with Scott Pendlebury. 17 to Sandilands, 16 to Watson and 13 to Goddard. With two rounds to go after round 20, the leader of the Brown Eye Medal from Carlton is Chris Judd. Two rounds to go for the Brown Eye Medal count in 2010. We have at least one winner. It's that man, Carlton's Chris Judd. Will we get two? Let's have a look at the leaderboard as it stands with two rounds to go. Dane Swan needs two best on grounds to tie with Chris Judd. Gary Ablett's in third spot with 22. Lenny Hayes has 19, as does Joel Selwood. Gary Ablett kicked four, but James Podziadli was reported as Geelong returned to dominance over Carlton after losing their previous two encounters. The Revolts kicked ten between them, but the highlight of the St Kilda-Richmond clash went to Brendan Goddard. Liam Jarrow wasn't to be outdone the next day. An undermanned Frio travelled to Tasmania and were unceremoniously thumped by the Hawks. Collingwood's victory sewed up the minor premiership 
but Mick still wasn't happy with the Knights' proceedings. The same could be said for his Adelaide counterpart. Matthew Knights had his own communication problems. The injury woes continued at the Bulldogs, with Adam Cooney gone for the year. And Boomer Harvey enjoyed a spirited win on his 300th game. Round 21, West Coast versus North Melbourne. West Coast A. Embley, one vote. North Melbourne S. Thompson, two votes. North Melbourne A. Swallow, three votes. Port Adelaide versus Melbourne. Port Adelaide D. Cassisi, one vote. Melbourne C. Bruce, two votes. Port Adelaide T. Boak, three votes. Essendon versus Brisbane. Brisbane M. Riscatelli, one vote. Brisbane D. Rich, two votes. Brisbane J. Brown, three votes. Sydney versus Western Bulldogs. Sydney B. Kirk, one vote. Sydney, T. Dennis Lane, two votes. Sydney, K. Jack, three votes. Hawthorne versus Fremantle. Hawthorne, S. Mitchell, one vote. Hawthorne, S. Burgoyne, two votes. Hawthorne, L. Hodge, three votes. St Kilda versus Richmond. Richmond, J. Rebolt, one vote. St Kilda, N. Del Santo, two votes. St Kilda, L. Montagna, three votes. Geelong versus Carlton. Geelong, G. Ablett, one vote. Geelong, J. Selwood, two votes. Geelong, P. Chapman, three votes. Collingwood versus Adelaide. Collingwood, D. Thomas, one vote. Adelaide, S. Thompson, two votes. Collingwood, S. Pendlebury, three votes. Chris Judd is going to win the Brownlow medal. Andrew, please uh, read on round, round 22. Round 22. Round 22. Richmond, Port Adelaide. Richmond, M. Morton, one vote. Port Adelaide, D. Brogan, two votes. Port Adelaide, T. Boak, three votes. Melbourne versus Fremant, uh, North Melbourne. North Melbourne, B. Rawlings, one vote. North Melbourne, B. Harvey, two votes. North Melbourne, L. Greenwood, three votes. Brisbane versus Sydney. Sydney, T. Dennis Lane, one vote. Sydney, J. McVeigh, two votes. Sydney, K. Jack, three votes. Adelaide versus St Kilda. St Kilda, B. Goddard, one vote. Adelaide, R. Douglas, two votes. Adelaide, S. Thompson, three votes. Western Bulldogs versus Essendon. Western Bulldogs, D. Cross, one vote. Western Bulldogs, M. Boyd, two votes. Western Bulldogs, J. Grant, three votes. Hawthorne versus Collingwood. Collingwood, D. Swan, one vote. Hawthorne, L. Franklin, two votes. Hawthorne, S. Mitchell, three votes. Geelong versus West Coast. Geelong, A. Mackey, one vote. Geelong, J. Kelly, two votes. Geelong, G. Ablett, three votes. Fremantle versus Carlton. Carlton, C. Judd, one vote. Carlton, B. Gibbs, two votes. Fremantle, A. Sanderlands, three votes. I declare the winner of the 2010 Brownlow medal, Chris Judd from the Carlton Football Club. And as the winner makes his way to collect his Brownlow, some past winners will welcome him back to the club in the Brownlow Medal Hall of Fame.
Thanks, Mark. I'd like to call on the Chairman of the AFL Commission, firstly, Mike Fitzpatrick, to say a few words. Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Judd of Carlton, recruited from Caulfield Grammar, East Sandringham Football Club and Sandringham Dragons, debuted in 2002 for the West Coast Eagles, has played 198 games. He was the 2004 Brownlow medal winner and third in the 2006 count. He captained West Coast to the Premiership in 2006 before joining Carlton in 2008 as captain. He's a five-time All-Australian, counting this year. The club's last Brownlow medal was Greg Williams in 1994, and Chris is only the fifth medalist in Carlton's history. He now joins Greg Williams, Peter Moore and Ian Stewart as one of only four people to win medals at two clubs. So, ladies and gentlemen, could I please ask you to charge your glasses, be upstanding, and toast the 2010 Brownlow medalist from Carlton Football Club, Chris Judd. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, before we welcome the winner, put your hands together for Gary Ablett, last year's winner of the Brownlow, who finished runner-up. And all the best, Gary, whatever you decide to do, mate. Please, Chris. We meet again, my friend. We do. It's a bit of deja vu. You could have had a shave. Well, yeah, Beck, uh, Beck thinks I'm a little shiny if I've the shaved head and the closely shaved face, so I've, I've gone for a little bit of facial stubble. Uh, Dane Swan was a red-hot favourite. What sort of chance did you give yourself? Look, uh, you know, I can honestly say none at all. Obviously, Dane's had an amazing year, as has Gazza and, and Hodgie and others, so... You know, I, don't, I don't think anyone comes to these things expecting to win, but sometimes you really come expecting not to, not to win, and that was certainly me tonight. So it's a, uh, it's a spin out, but you know, it's, a, it's a huge honour, and uh, yeah, it's still just uh, still pretty excited about it. You're the 13th man to win the Brownlow at least twice, and one of the rare few to win it at two different clubs. Yeah, it was, it was a, a, a big decision to come home and come to Carlton um, after six years at West Coast. Um, you know, I've really enjoyed the challenge of, of playing with a new club and, and, you know, really enjoyed playing with a new group of blokes that are a, a fantastic crew. So, um, you know, I think, I think all the players that are having a drink tonight are, are envious of the blokes that are sipping on, on waters tonight and, uh, and hopefully our club's not too far away from being in, in that same, uh, same situation. You polled 30 votes, uh, exactly the same as when you won it last time in 2004. You were at 21 years of age that night and did, let's be honest, you'd had a couple. <laughs> uh, can you, what can you remember of that night? No, I remember it well. Um, I snuck a couple in pre-Brownlow uh, pre and look, I mean, it was much the same. I, I didn't expect to win that, might, but that night, but at least I, um, I tallied up how many votes I thought I'd get for the night. Um, I think I came up with 18, so I, I was... Uh, you know, surprised to get to 30, and, and tonight I probably didn't even bother. So, as I said, a, um, you know, a huge spin out for me and probably a lot of people in the room, but um, yeah, we'll take it. <laughs> no, you sure will. We heard um, what Jimmy Stein said, what it means to be a Brownlow medalist. You've also <clears throat> experienced that great honour. What does it mean to be a Brownlow medalist? Oh, look, there's no doubt it, it is a huge honour, and I think footballers and, uh, and, and Brownlow medalists get get put up on, on pedestals, if you like. Um, but when you see someone like, like Jim Steins and, uh, and what he's doing in the real world, I think, you know, football, if you like, is sort of make-believe. It's, it's, it's like a self-indulgent pastime where you go out each week and you announce to the football public the type of person you and, and your mates are. It, it, it's not real. Whereas you look at something that Jim Steins is doing, and that's, that's really happening in the real world. And, and people like Jim and, and plenty of other you know, ordinary Australians with, with lower profiles than Jim are the real heroes in our society. And, you know, I was a Melbourne fan growing up and Jimmy and Gary Lyon were my two favourite players. And it was an inspiration what he did on the football field, but certainly what he's done in, uh, you know, his public battle with cancer in the last couple of years is even, even more of an inspiration. You touched on it earlier. How tough was it? 
to leave the West Coast Eagles and tell us about the courting process and why did you choose Carlton? Oh, look, it was a, it was a big decision. Um, you know, I, I loved the, the West Coast Eagles footy club and, and the teammates I played with, um, you know, some, some of whom are here tonight. Um, in the end, it was really just I wanted to come back to Melbourne to be close to my family and, and childhood friends and probably feel like I had a bit more of a life um, outside of the footy club. Um, so that was just the decision I made, but it, yeah, it, it was a very tough decision. And, uh, you know, as I said now, really excited to be part of the, the Carlton Footy Club. Um, was it always going to be Carlton? Oh, look, look at, not necessarily. I, I probably had a bit of a relationship with Greg Swan, um, which spawned out of a couple of days at the races. Um, and it, it's it's, big days. Yeah, well, it's just funny how, you know, the road your life takes. So I was, um, you know, I knew him a little bit and, and in the end, you know, more than anything, that was probably the thing that, that got me over the line. Uh, let's go back just to this season. Uh, round 13, you were playing the Fremantle Dockers and you threw back an elbow yeah. and you split open Matthew Pavlich's cheekbone. In retrospect, do you think you are a bit lucky not to get suspended by the match review panel? No, I can honestly say I, I haven't even seen the footage of it, so I, um, yeah, I was probably a bit lucky. Um, <laughs> Come on, you must have seen it. I honestly haven't. I, you haven't I, seen it? I, gave Pav, I haven't said hello to Pav. I gave him Do you want to say sorry? I, well, it was an accident, so um, <laughs> I am sorry. Yeah. Just going back to the 2001 Super Draft, the top three place getters tonight were all from that Super Draft. What an amazing season that must have been in the TAC Cup before you all played league footy. Yeah, it was a um, yeah, much talked about draft at the time. Um, and just, just one of the things, obviously, you know, Hodgie and, uh, and Gaz had, had amazing years and, and polled really well tonight, as did, uh, did Swanee. So, um, yeah, we, we must all be at that, that vote getting age. You've told us a few times begrudgingly you, you're not really happy about being a role model, but you are. Is it, how does it sit with you? I think your opinions on things change as you get older. I think as, you know, the younger you are, the more selfish you are and, and probably the more you think about number one. And as you get older, you slowly start to realise that there's other people living in the world. Um, you know, I, th I think my comments maybe got misconstrued a little bit. I, I think my comments were more around, you know, the real role models in the community are the ones going through the, the struggles like Jim Steins, and these are the people that kids should, should essentially look up to. Um, but, yeah, certainly I, I think I've become more cognisant of the fact that you can make a bit of a difference as, you, as an AFL footballer, and, you know, I think the, you know, the team role model is something that probably sits a little bit more comfortably with me now than it did when I was a, um, you know, a kid. Who's more famous, you or Rebecca Twigley? <laughs> no, well, she's, uh, she's certainly a lot more natural on the blue carpet and uh, she does a great job. So I'm very lucky to, and, and she's better looking with better hair. So I'm, uh, I'm very lucky to have her and she's, she's been wonderful support to me and uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, the rest of our lives together. You're getting married New Year's Eve, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Talk us about the wedding plans. How much save you had in it? Well, early on, I um, I threw in my, my two bobs worth and, and and quickly got told that it it wasn't really uh, required. So <laughs> I probably took that as the green light that I didn't have to do too much. And uh, I'm yet to get yelled I'm yet to get yelled at for not doing too much. So oh, you will, my friend. <laughs> you will. Uh, before we let you go, I'm sure there's a few thank yous you'd like to say. Uh, yes. Where do I start? Um, I guess firstly to, the, to Carlton Football Club, to um, you know, the, uh, the players, it's been three years now and I've loved, uh, loved playing with you and I think when you, you do win individual awards, um, you know, everybody gets up and they thank their teammates and the reason they thank their teammates is because the individual awards can't get won without the hard work of your, uh, your teammates. So thanks boys. Um, I'd like to also thank the, uh, the coaches, the administration, the sponsors, uh, Hyundai, Mars and Vizi and Optus. Got them in. Um, and uh, thanks very much to, obviously, Rebecca, touched on it before. Um, but thanks for uh, all your assistance during the year. Um, you didn't give me a hope tonight and uh, I showed you. Um, <laughs> Also, thanks to, uh, thanks to my family, um, my dad Andrew, my, uh, my mum Lisa and sister Lauren, um, they're wonderful people um, and uh, 
yeah, obviously bear much of the responsibility for me standing up here today. Um, look, there's going to be a million other people who I've forgotten. Um, still a bit rattled by it all, but look, thanks to everyone over the journey, and uh, yeah, hopefully you have a drink for me tonight. Chris Judd, Jewel Brownlow medalist, congratulations. Well done, mate. A break from Crown, plenty more to come in the Brownlow medal for 2010. I declare the winner of the 2010 Brownlow medal, Chris Judd from the Carlton Football Club. What a night for Carlton captain Chris Judd winning his second Brownlow medal. He won his first with the West Coast Eagles and he was won his second with the Carlton Football Club. Just the 13th man in this game's history to win the Brownlow medal at least twice. Let's have a look at uh, the leaderboard, the final leaderboard for the Brownlow medal count. And Chris Judd winning with 30 votes. That's what he polled when he won the medal in 2004. Gary Ablett, another fantastic season. He finished second with 26. Dane Swan rounded out the top three with 24. Let's go down to Andy Ma, and he's with uh, the fiance of Chris Judd, Rebecca Twigley. Thanks very much, Quarters. Um, did you really think he had no hope of winning this tonight? I did think he had no hope. I thought uh, maybe top four, top three at best. Yeah. So I was really surprised, but it's, it's so exciting. And, and as Chris said, you never expect to win coming into these things, and it's always kind of a little bit of a surprise. So. I'm just wrapped. I'm still pinching myself. It's a fantastic result. He told us back in 2004 he was uh, confident enough to at least tally up the votes. He said he didn't even bother tonight. Did he genuinely give himself no chance of winning coming here tonight? Yeah, yep, no chance. I think um, because he missed the first three games of the season. So once you miss a big chunk like that, you kind of write yourself off. But he shouldn't have really because Gary Ablett did the same thing last year. He missed three games and he, and he you know, charged home. So... Who knows? He seems to take it all in his stride. He doesn't seem to change much. The Chris Judd that we saw all those years ago emerge appears to be pretty much the same Chris Judd we see nowadays. Have, have you seen it change him over the journey? Uh, no, he's he's still the same person. He's, he's still the Chris that I met, you yeah. know, about seven years ago. I, I think his game's changed a lot, but I think the person's, yeah, he's, he's still the same old Chris. Well, you've seen him play a lot of football, probably mm. seen him play as much football as anybody. Do you think he's actually getting better? I do. I, I think um, obviously his roles changed. At West Coast, he was a lot more of an outside player and he had such amazing support in Kerr and Cousins and he had Coxie putting it down his throat yeah. every week and he had Rowan Jones and Tyson Stengland blocking for him at every clearance and, and it's so different at Carlton. We've got such a young team and there's not quite that support there so he's played a different role. So I think for him to win tonight, given the team that he's playing in and their youth, I think is just an extraordinary achievement. He had to buy into a lot of responsibility when he came out of the cup and the expectations were gigantic on him. He's shouldered that load from the outside looking in really, really well. You must be extraordinarily proud of him. I am. I, he's amazing and yeah, I'm so proud of him and I just want to marry him. Yeah, he's going. So what does he do with all the medals? I mean, he's got two, a couple of best and oh, fairest from here, a couple from over there. They're hidden. We need a safe. They're kind of, they're hidden somewhere at our house, but I think once we um, move into our next house, he'll put them up somewhere. I, I think he's building a man room. Right. So I think they'll be on display in the man room. I find that hard to believe. I can't believe that he'd be the sort of bloke that would have a shrine to himself somewhere in his own place. Surely he's not going to have one of those pool rooms with jumpers and all his trinkets hanging up all over the place. Actually, you're probably right. He's so not that type of person. Yeah. It'll be me encouraging it, and he'll be like, nah, you're such a tool. Get it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Has he genuinely been no good, no use to you whatsoever in terms of the preparations for this wedding of the year? Uh, yeah, no, look, I've planned it. Yeah. He's, uh, he's funded it, so he's been very useful in that way. Yeah, but uh, I've, been, I've organised everything, yeah. 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 Well, it's going to be a fantastic end to what's been just a brilliant year. Can it get better than this? I mean, it's now, for him, I guess, not about these individual things anymore. It's about achieving a bit of team success. Oh, absolutely, and it always has been for yeah. him. He's, he's, you know, not about these individual awards. And after we lost to Sydney, he was just so gutted. You know, he was almost in tears and... And that's what it's about now. That's that's what it's always been about. And hopefully, give us another couple of uh, another year or two under our belts. You know, we've still got such a average, you know, young average yep. age. I think we're the youngest team in the top eight. So give us another couple of years and watch out. 
And what's on for the rest of the night? I don't know, we weren't expecting this, so I don't know, I've got to talk to the boss. Yep, yeah, you yeah. Hey, congratulations on your role in it all. Uh, he Thank couldn't you. have done it without you. Oh, thanks. I'm sure he could have. <laughs> Good on you. Rebecca Twigley, back to you, Cordes. Thanks, Andy. Andy Ma there with the Chris Judd's fiance, Rebecca Twigley. Another break from Crown. We will be back to wrap up shortly. Chris Judd, the winner of the Brownlow Medal for 2010. Welcome back to Crown for the last time tonight as we celebrate Chris Judd winning the 2010 Brownlow medal. Let's have a look at the final leaderboard once again for those interested. The top 10, Chris Judd with 30 votes. Gary Ablett second with 26. I wonder where he will be playing next year. Dane Swan, a wonderful year on 24. He's got bigger fish to fry on the weekend. Scott Pendlebury, also a wonderful uh, effort by him for the Magpies with 21. Joel Selwood from the Cats, also with 21. Matthew Boyd from the Western Bulldogs, he was their top uh, vote getter with 20. And Aaron Sandlin's a terrific year, also with 20. Lenny Hayes from the Saints on 19. Travis Spoke, 16. And Luke Hodge from the Hawks, also with 16. Let's go back to Andy Ma. He's with the coach of the Blues, Brett Ratton. Thanks very much, Quarters. Um, did you give him a realistic chance coming here tonight? Um, I thought he'd finish around sort of in the, you know, three, four or five and I thought he had to really get the, um, the prime votes in the three votes to get the uh, prize and um, I think everything he went for he nailed. So, you know, he's a champion of the game and full credit to him. Tell us about the contribution he's made to your footy club. I think he, even he spoke about the role model uh, scenario, but what he's done for our younger players around the club and, uh, you know, I suppose just to give them an insight about the professionalism uh, that you can win a Brownlow and take your game to another another level. It's been outstanding. I think you know the Murphy, Gibbs, those players have really relished from uh, him being around. Have you seen that? For like first hand, observe them watching Chris Judd, the way he goes about training and preparing for training and preparing for game day. Have you just sat back at times and said, "That's a bit interesting." Have a look at that. Yeah, I think it's more about, I suppose, the off-field and, uh, you know, watching Chris in his first year come to our football club and you sort of said, oh, Chris, how are you going off-field? What are you doing? And he actually puts 15 hours a week aside for his own personal, you know, whether it's trampolining, yoga, etc. And I think when the players heard that, they thought, well, I must have to do more. And it becomes contagious and I think that's really caught up with the, with the group. Do you think you can get better? I know it's setting, you set a ridiculously high bar now, but could he actually improve on what he's dished out so far yeah i think i think there's still upside i think uh i think you know even in our review we spoke about maybe kicking more goals and seeing ablett do what he did this year going forward and really having that impact i think that's a an area that chris would like to improve on but uh i think he showed in that final where in the third quarter he just turned the game on its head and just dominated it was a bit like coup defeaties in that final yep. he just said i'll you know i'll take us to where we need to go and tried to lead the team and Unfortunately, we come up short. He obviously sets really high standards for himself. Is he critical in his own self-analysis? Yeah, I think he is. Um, I think the beauty of Chris is he really gets over that performance really quickly, whether it's good, bad or indifferent. He sort of says, you know, by the Monday it's sort of shut off. He doesn't dwell on too many things. And I think, uh, I suppose, he doesn't read a lot of the papers and things like that, as you've seen about the, yeah. uh, the Pavlich scenario. So he doesn't get caught up in it. So he just says, by Monday, whether it's our review, whatever it is, that's it, on to the next game, next opponent. And the umpies obviously just love him. Oh, I think uh, with his brilliance and you know the way he wins the ball, I think he catches the umpire's eye. And I think just, I suppose, in the team that we had and winning 11 games, I think he was the dominant player in our team. And I think justifiably, he got the votes. Been a good night for the footy club. Thanks for having a chat. Yeah, it's been fantastic. I think I've never been to one with uh, a player.